In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a very quick Gantt chart to visualize your project timetable. So we're going to be taking a look at the same project timetable that we've been looking at in the past few lectures, where we took a look at the workday function as well as the network day function. And now let's say your boss comes to you and says, could you quickly visualize this somehow and present this in our meeting? This is what you need to do. So this is our data set and based on this data set, we're going to create our Gantt chart. There are different ways of doing this. You can use an actual Excel chart or you can use conditional formatting and use Excel's cells and format them, make them look like bars. You can use symbols and use the repeat function to get the bars for the Gantt chart. My way of doing this for this lecture is to use an actual Excel chart for our Gantt chart. So let's think how we can do that. What I'm going to do is to use the start date. I want the start date on my X axis. I do want my tasks on my Y axis. And these number of days, I actually don't need the number of working days. I need the number of full days, including weekends and including holidays. So basically the full difference between this and this, because that way I can visually see how long that task is going to take me. I can also include these working days as additional information for my visualization for my chart. Okay, but I do need this. I do need this. Now this is going to define a difference between this and this is going to define the length of that task, the length of these bars. Okay, so what type of chart should I use and how am I going to do this? The first thing that occurs to me, because one of my favorite techniques is using the error bars, that I can use error bars to get that difference, the number of working days, they can be my error bars. And because they're going to be horizontal, right, they're going to go this way, I can only have horizontal arrow bars in chart types where I have numbers on the x-axis. So which chart type is that? It's a scatter plot, right? In a scatter plot, I have values on the x as well as the y-axis, and that way I can use arrow bars that are horizontal. In that chart. Okay, so if I use a scatter plot, I need numbers, right? So I cannot put text on the Y. I need to put one, two, three, four. I actually need the numbering of these tasks instead of the text itself. Okay, so that's something that I need. And I also need to calculate the full difference between the end date and the start date. So let's just prepare this data for the chart, I'm just going to quickly add, just put number of days and I'm going to put task number on here. So this, you can use a formula for this. You can use the row function. If these are going to change, you might want to make it dynamic. For now, I'm just going to fix it to tasks one to nine. Now the number of days, that's just going to be the difference between my end date and my start date. And I need to format it as a number. I'm just copying the formatting of this over to this. Okay, so we can see even though the number of working days is eight, the full number of days is 11 because that's how long my task is going to take. Okay, so now for my chart, well, I want this one on the X. I want to have my task number on the Y. So I'm going to hold down control because I have ranges that are not close together. Highlight them. Let's go to insert and insert a scatter plot. Let's just make this more presentable. What I'm going to do is copy these tasks and paste them down here. I'm going to be putting this one here. So that's the aim of putting this in front. Now we can see this is reversed because task number one is up here and on my chart is down here. So I want to flip them over. I'm just going to double click this, go to the axis options here and click values in reverse order. So that switches them around. 
Now what I want to do is ultimately I want to place this nicely on here. So let's take away the shape fill and let's take away that shape outline as well. Okay, so these borders would look good if they go all the way through. So I'm going to highlight this area, press Control 1. And from the border, that's the gray we want. Let's just add it to here, here, and here. Now I'm going to take away these grid lines that we can see inside the chart. Okay, so what I need to achieve is that that task one is here and this one is here and the last one sits right on in front of that last task here. Okay, yeah, so this looks about right. I can deal with the positioning later on as well. So let me now remove the y-axis. For the x-axis, let's give it more breathing space. I don't need a title. Now we can see everything jumped. Here I'm going to take away the line, select no line. And from the axis options, I can take away the year. I don't need to see that. It's just getting too crowded by having that there. So I'm going to go to number. I don't want it to link to the source formatting anymore. I'm going to go and overwrite that and just take away the year. So I have month and the day only. Okay. So now based on this, I have the position of the task for the start date, but I need to find out how many days it should go. So that's exactly where the error line technique is going to be super useful. So I'm going to select the series and for this series, we're going to add the error bars to this. Now I don't need the vertical one, so I can quickly go there and press delete. I only want the horizontal ones. Now when I click on it, let me just click away to get rid of that one. When I click on it, we can see the options that I have for the horizontal error bars. Which option here looks right to you? So this is my point. Which one of these do I need? The plus, right? Because I have my point and I'm moving this way from my point based on the number of days. I don't want a cap, so the cap is that little line that you can see at the end of the line. I don't want that. How much do I want my line to go across? So how long should that line be? Well, that really depends on the number of days that I have between the end date and the start date. So I'm going to go with custom, click on specify value, and for the plus positive error bars, I'm going to highlight these. Okay, so now I get the different lengths here. And I'm going to turn them into bars. Well, first off, let me just make it a lighter gray. Let's go with this one. And we're going to make it thicker. Okay, so that looks fine. And now that they're thicker, I can see, I can check the positioning of it, see that they exactly fit between that line. It takes a bit of playing. Best is to click control and click on the edge of your chart so that you can move it with the arrow keys. And the aim is to get the first one right. Once you do that, you have control over the plot area as well as the chart area to make the rest fit. So I'm gonna move now that chart area Okay, and they look fine in this case. So I'm going to click on my original dots on my original scatter plot, and I'm going to hide those points because no one needs to see them. So I'm going to select no fill and no outline for that. Okay, so now I have my tasks, I have the starting date, and I have how long each task takes shown visually. Now, what we can do to make it more readable is to 
add our number of working days to the chart as well. So I'm going to shift this a bit over and copy this and do a paste special. Just going to paste the links to that so that they're linked to my original data source. Let's move this up, make it a bit smaller and make it gray. And that looks good. Okay, so now let's just change something, make sure everything works fine. So let's take a task, let's take the beginning task. We say for completion of design, we don't need eight working days, we need actually a lot more. We need 15 working days for that. Okay, so that expands, that shows here, our full number of days gets calculated here and it's reflecting in our chart as well. Okay, so that's a quick way that you can visualize your project time plan in Excel and present it in your meeting. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you like these type of videos, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you can get notifications when new videos like this one come out.